Hello, and welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for September of 2023. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. And I'm Julia Mikas, and I'm in San Francisco, California. Let's take a look at what's happening this month. Well, hello there, Cancer. And uh, this month starts with some really great energy in your second house, making you especially relatable in the realm of finances, which can add to your bank, maybe because you're especially charming. And Julia will tell you more about Venus here. That's a really nice thing, especially once she goes direct. But Juno here, she's also a relator. She's very much about committed partnerships. And so she covers marriage, but also business partnerships. And when Juno is passing through your second house, there are a couple of things to pay attention to. One of them is having a good, healthy, and cozy life of the body with your partner. So if you are married or have a live-in partner or co-parent, um, to be maintaining your health in the best ways possible with how you eat together, how you sleep together. And um, this can be a very snuggly transit too, if you're needing some touch that you haven't been getting recently. Um, Juno will be in this house um, through the rest of the month and until mid-October. And the other thought that I want to tell you about Juno in this house is it can be a really good time to have conversations with your partner about money and about how the money is uh, has uh, healthy separation. In other words, uh, where how does your money flow in the system? Like how does it come in? How does it merge and blend with your partner's money? And then how do you get your takeaway? And this applies whether we're talking, you know, a spousal marriage um, with money sharing in it or uh, whether we're talking a business partnership. So this month, while Juno is passing through your second house, can be a really good time for those kinds of dialogues and discussions with your partner about the flow of money and where to maintain a healthy separation and, and where to uh, consider merging your buckets. Uh, series I want to talk about next. She is traveling through your fourth house at the beginning of the month. She is going to change signs halfway through, but um, I just want to start here. Series in the fourth house is pretty awesome because the fourth house is a house of home and domestic life. And that can mean the physical home that you live in. It can also mean the like the emotional home um, like the emotional aura of the home, if you will. And it can also refer to your home of childhood. When Ceres is moving through this house, is a really great time to make your home as cozy and comfortable as possible and to set up routines and rhythms for a healthy life of the body in your home and with any people that you share it with. So this is a particularly good and useful transit for parents uh, who maybe have to like, you know, come up with a new routine at home, especially because school is coming, isn't it? Uh, and then about midway way through the month, Ceres moves on into your fifth house right there. And um, this, is, this is an interesting transit about which I generally like to give a warning because Ceres is a very sensible and practical goddess. She really likes to see to it that you have as much security and comfort and financial abundance as you can have. And, um, and she wants you to be comfortable in your body. And she does bring this practical sensibility wherever she goes. But the fifth house is very, very different from that and its themes. This is a house of fun and play. And if there's anything that Ceres likes in this house, <clears throat> it's luxury purchases. So buying the most elegant, the most grand version of whatever you might be wanting right now. And so this is the time when you might feel very pulled to shop for like that luxury car that you've been wanting or to at least make a vision board about it. And there's certainly no harm in that. But uh, I do, I do want to warn you that the, uh, there is some risk with series passing through this house of things like, you know, foolish gambling, spending more than you had to, buying something because you think that the, um, uh, the price is a reflection of the value and then discovering that maybe you didn't get the value that you wanted. So I think that Ceres needs to bring her practical um, skepticism when traveling through this house. 
uh, it can also signal shopping as recreation. Um, and that can certainly be attended by, you know, uh, regret later on. Um, Ceres is going to pass through this house for the rest of the month and into next month. Now, Jupiter starts the month in your 11th house. And this is where he's spending the year. And Jupiter is a luck bringer. Jupiter brings enthusiasm and uh, playfulness and growth and expansion and a sense of the possibilities and, uh, and the far horizons in any given area. Jupiter is passing through your 11th house this year, which means that you might want to expand on your social circles. You might find yourself especially enjoying and feeling expanded when you're hanging out with friends, uh, when you're building community. You might find yourself discovering a whole new tribe and feeling a sense of belonging that you haven't felt before. And those things can be wonderful, feel good, and also be growthful. I do want to say that Jupiter is going retrograde fairly early in the month. There it is, Jupiter retrograde right here in your 11th house. And when Jupiter goes retrograde, it happens every year and it lasts for a couple of months. <clears throat> and the day right around the day that Jupiter turns retrograde can be a real turning point in your growth process. So it may be, for example, that as Jupiter moved into this house uh, in the last couple of months that You've been expanding in your social circles and like discovering new people and new friends and so forth. And it may be that you're kind of caught short when Jupiter goes retrograde and you're asking yourself, does this group or person really make me feel expanded? Is this a place for me to grow? Do I feel like I belong here or do I need to keep wandering about the landscape and searching for that ideal community? So there can be a bit of restlessness when Jupiter goes retrograde. Uh, hey, Julia, what's up with Venus, Mercury, and Mars for the Cancers? Hey there, Cancer. So the good news is Venus is going to go direct very early this month on the 3rd. She's been retrograde for a number of weeks now. So this summer has been a time of relationship review for us all because that's what we all do when Venus moves backwards in the sky. It happens about once every two years. So Venus starts off the month retrograde in your second house. So that means you'll be thinking of your relationship in terms of second house stuff. This is the house of money. It's the house of possessions and it is the house of values. That can be anything from political values, religious values, family values. Um, and when Venus is retrograde the first couple of days of the month, as well as the past few weeks, you've been reviewing whether your partner and you are on the same page when it comes to money. Is there a sense that one person's more of the earner and ends up paying more than the other? Or have you been relying on your partner and now you actually want to make some more money to contribute to the, to the relationship? Um, this can also be a house of stuff too. So maybe one of you has, you know, all most of the things that the other one just borrows all the time. Anyway, there might be some financial or material asymmetries in your relationship that you're really looking over now. And that can also include values too. You know, do you feel like your partner shares the same values with you to make the relationship really long term? And if you are single right now, then you might be thinking about your next relationship through this lens, thinking, you know, I'm so sick of having to pay for everything like my last relationship. I want the next one to be better and different. Um, now, Mercury is also going to go direct mid-month on September 15th, but he starts off retrograde in your third house. So Mercury represents speech, learning, communication, uh, and that's what the third house is all about, too. And we all know that Mercury retrogrades can be times of miscommunication. This is going double for you this month, Cancer, because Mercury is retrograde in the house of communication. So, you know, just it might be kind of a frustrating cycle in terms of trying to get your point across to other people or maybe some misunderstandings really just kind of make things squirrely and unravel things in your life. Um, so just try to be patient with communicating during this time. Um, and on September 6, Mercury is going to conjoin the sun while going backwards. We call that lesser epiphany day. This is a time of insights and revelations in your life. 
So you could have some insights into the miscommunications that have been taking place. This is also the house of neighbors and your siblings. So maybe there's some insights happening around those areas of your life too. It's also the house of writing. This might be a time if you're working on writing where you've been having to go back over a lot of your work and Mercury conjoining the sun might actually kind of help shed some light on what's going on. Then by September 15th, Mercury goes direct and that's going to start slowly making communications a lot better in your life. Finally, Mars, Mars, the planet of action and activity, also the planet of passion and anger is in your fourth house all month. So the fourth house, this rules your family, including parents. It's your physical home where you live, you know, and it's also the past too. And when Mars goes through this house, first, it can mean that whatever annoys you this, this month, it might most likely come from your past in some way, you know, something that happened a long time ago, that's still kind of irritating you now, even if you thought you'd gotten over it. Uh, Mars in the fourth house can also bring up conflict, you know, with the people you live with, also with parents as well, um, anybody you share your home with, essentially. Um, now, Mars in the fourth can be fabulous when it comes to having to do a lot of work at the house. So if you are, you know, zooming in from a home, a uh, great time to just get a lot of work done, uh, as well as if you have a lot of projects around the house too. Mars in the fourth can really give you the energy that you need to get a lot of stuff done. Hmm. Good stuff. Hi, Jamie here. Horoscopes and moon videos are fascinating, but they're also not personalized for you. That's why we run live workshops monthly where you can get answers about your own chart. This month's topic is optimizing Mercury retrograde for writers, managers, and learners. Mercury retrogrades are notorious for making a mess of your office, your paperwork, your projects, and your brain, but it doesn't have to be that way. In this workshop, I'll explain how to handle this difficult transit just in time for back to school. This workshop is expressly for our demigod Patreon subscribers who pay only $15 a month for access to live events like this one. It's easy to sign up at the Patreon link in the description below. I'd love to see you there. Now let's get back to the video. Well, I want to tell you about a couple of moons. The first one is happening on the 14th. It's a new moon in Virgo right here in your third house. And <clears throat> new moons are good times to plant seeds. This one in particular, we're calling seeds of selfless service because it is in Virgo. And, uh, and it opposes Neptune right here. So there's this balancing act going on between wanting to be of practical use versus wanting to also bring in the kindness, the compassion, the um, very not practical, but still meaningful warmth. And um, this moon is landing in your third house, which is a really great place for brainstorming ideas, communications, and relating with those right around you, uh, siblings, neighbors, uh, people in your neighborhood, housemates. And so <clears throat> this can really plant the seeds of some great conversations where you find that by making yourself useful <clears throat> to the people right around you, that you plant some seeds that can come to fruition later on in the future at some undetermined time where that good karma comes back to you. And it can make your neighborhood and your home feel really good to be in. Um, we call that paying paying forward, or we call it doing anonymous good. And that is some pretty great stuff. The second moon that I want to tell you about this month is happening on the 29th. And it's a full moon in Aries. So the moon itself is right here in Aries in your 10th house. Full moons tend to have a big energy, a lot of emotion with them. Uh, especially when they fall in a fire sign as this one does. Now, the moon in Aries can be pretty hasty and impulsive. It can be pretty driven and pretty pushy. And landing in your 10th house as this does, you might find yourself feeling a little extra impulsive at work and a little driven and like you just want to do things your own way. So that's something to watch out for because it could lead to a sort of tantrum that might impact your reputation. Now, this is just a full moon. It's not an eclipse, so it's not something to worry about in a very big way, but I do think it's a bit of a watch out. And then we have the sun opposite that moon in the fourth house, 
bringing in a balancing factor that's very rational, very strategic, very thoughtful, uh, very fair-minded, which might even be the signal that somebody in your home life uh, or even yourself, once you get home from work and you're no longer feeling that impulsive urge and instead you're just feeling a little bit more grounded and balanced, that you then rethink the situation and, uh, and come back at, at it in a more balanced way. Now, we're actually calling this moon the sacred fire of self-care. And the reason for that is the presence of Vesta, who is the, uh, the temple priestess, who creates sacred space into which powerful energies can be channeled. She's all about themes of focusing and she's in cancer. And so there is uh, a very strong theme here of self-care, which involves finding the balance between an apt expenditure of your energy and a more uh, calm and peaceful and reflective way of being. So over the course of the month, as you can see, towards the beginning of the month, we have uh, quite a bit of energy in your second house, bringing the focus to finances, most particularly your own personal finances. And then about halfway through the month, we have uh, energies gathering in your third house, <clears throat> like uh, like this, the third house where um, a lot of the energy and attention is on your life of the mind and the people around you every day that you communicate with, uh, neighbors, siblings, um, friends, neighborhood, uh, but also communication itself. Lots of emphasis on that mid-month. And then towards the end of the month, there is a general migration of planets over here into your fourth house. And uh, this is the seasonal change I'm talking about. So the sun leaves your third house, moves into your fourth house on September 23rd. We'll spend 30 days here in the fourth house, which is that realm of home and family, domestic life, heritage, and roots. And wherever the sun goes, you should pay attention because whatever you put your attention on grows. And the fourth house is a really great place to expend your attention because this means paying attention to the physical home that you live in and the moods of the people there and how the emotional atmosphere could be bettered by your sunny attention and, uh, and the people that you live with and, uh, and just making your home a brighter, sunnier, friendlier, warmer place to be for you and all of the living beings in it whether those are people or animals. And what a great way to spend the 30 days starting September 23rd. Well, that's all we have for you today. If you love Pandora Astrology's free and informative horoscopes, then please do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share these videos with your friends. You can find out so much more about how this month's transits affect you in very personal timing in our monthly Patreon workshops. Find the link in the description below to get started. Enjoy the equinox, and until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye-bye.